Okay, today we're going to start disc to discuss hyponatremia and then we'll discuss hypernatremia after that. Hyponatremia means what? It means low sodium concentration in the extracellular fluid, we'll call it ECF. And normal sodium concentration in the extracellular fluid is 135. And this is what are being what's reported to us on the BMP or CMP is the sodium concentration to 145 milli equivalent of what? Sodium per liter of what? Water. So this is the sodium concentration relative to what? Relative to water content in the extracellular fluids. That's very important to understand. And the way we calculate it is by the sodium content on in the extracellular fluid, which is, um, let's call it it's ECF sodium. The content of ECF sodium, the amount of sodium in the extracellular fluid, and it is in milli equivalent, divided by the amount of water in the extracellular fluid in liters. That's how we calculate the sodium concentration. And this is mainly what we do when we say hyponatremia or hypernatremia, we are only talking about the extracellular fluid. And for, uh, for that reason, let me draw this picture to make it easier for all of us to understand. So this is the ex intracellular fluid and this is the extracellular fluid or compartment. As you know, sodium mainly is confined to the extracellular fluid and there is very small amount in the intracellular fluid. You can cross it off and you don't even consider it. So it's mainly being kept extracellularly by the NAKATPase pump, which we're not going to talk about now. Now, the fact that sodium being confined to the extracellular fluids, right? The amount of sodium here, based on the amount of water here, right, will decide the concentration of sodium, as we just said. Now, the body job is to keep the sodium concentration at this normal narrow range. And to keep it that way, the body monitor the extracellular fluid for how much sodium there and provide the amount of water needed to keep this concentration. So the main thing, as you can see, to keep this sodium concentration at this range is water. Is the amount of water the body can provide here based on the sodium amount. Now, the sodium here in the extracellular fluid, the ECF, Na, which is the sodium amount in the extracellular fluid, you can safely say it's equivalent or roughly equivalent to total body sodium because the intracellular sodium is very small. And now you can safely say that every time the total body sodium goes up, that means the sodium here will go up, the body need to drag more water here to keep this concentration at this range. That tells you that the sodium is an osmotic agent and it has the ability to create the osmotic drive to get this water here. And then the other thing, it's confined to this space. It doesn't move freely back to the intracellular space. And this is creates something we call it tonicity. And I'll come to tonicity, to tonicity in a second. But now let's, I want to stay here. Now, every time total body sodium, which means the total sodium in the extracellular fluid increase, that drags water to this, dragging water to the extracellular fluid will increase, lead to increase in the size of the extracellular fluid. And the other name of increase in the extracellular fluid size is volume overload. And the opposite is true. Decreased total body sodium will shift the water to the other direction to keep the concentration at this range. 
and this will decrease now we're shifting water away from the extracellular fluid and the decrease the extracellular fluid size and the other name of this is called volume depletion so you can understand now that the total body sodium is mainly related to or correlates with the extracellular fluid size whether increase or decrease volume overload or volume depletion but has nothing to do with the concentration because every time the total body sodium decrease or increase the water will step in to keep this range that again tells you that hyponatremia or hyponatremia are water problem rather than sodium content problems that's very essential to understand now from now on hyponatremia and hypernatremia are caused by water control mechanism not sodium control mechanism sodium control mechanisms affect here works here but has nothing to do with the sodium concentration believe it or not okay now let's go back to the tonicity as we said tonicity means mainly two things let me change the color here back to black that it has the osmotic drive that the salute has the osmotic drive that able to drag water toward its direction like sodium plus being confined to one space if you meet these two criteria then you can affect or contribute to tonicity and this clearly apply to sodium and in normal physiologic conditions sodium concentration is the main determinant of body tonicity of the extracellular fluid when i say tonicity that means extracellular fluid tonicity and the extracellular fluid tonicity basically you can safely in normal physiologic conditions equivalent ecf tonicity because the water will go inside the brain cells are very sensitive to this and that's why mainly when you study about hyper or hyponatremia the main symptoms are related to the cns because the brain cells are very sensitive it's because either cell shrinkage or cell swelling you will have this problem then bring me to maybe now you can visit. so what's the difference is osmolality different what's the difference between osmolality and tonicity okay osmolality basically you bring all the major solutes in the extracellular fluid and divide them by the amount of water remember when we calculate sodium concentration said so the total amount of sodium in the extracellular fluid and you divide it by the amount of water right osmolality now basically you add the major solutes you don't add the minor solutes so the major solutes are sodium and then we have glucose and we have urea the b1 so the sodium the sodium chloride goes in hand in hand so we say two multiplied by sodium milli equivalent per liter okay plus the glucose you need to convert it uh, convert that to the milli equivalent so you divide it by 18 which is the molecular word, uh, weight of glucose the urea you divide it by 2.8 because they are milligram in this uh, if, per deciliter you need to convert it to milli equivalent per liter so you divide by their molecular weight that will give you the osmolarity and normally body osmolarity around uh, 270 to 290 it can go up to 300 that's still considered okay now remember tonicity we said two criteria to affect tonicity being able to create osmotic gradient or drive and confined to one space and we said this does apply to sodium how about glucose glucose in when when we have euglycemia glucose readily absorbed into the cells so it has it doesn't stay in the extracellular fluid it, so it has no effect on tonicity it doesn't meet this criteria glucose though if becomes the patient critically hyperglycemic with really high glycemia then it will some of it or large amount of it will be confined to the extracellular fluid because the cell cannot absorb it and it has the osmotic drive so then glucose can affect tonicity 
in severe hyperglycemia or cases of hyperglycemia. But in euglycemia, it has it doesn't stay in the extracellular fluid and it doesn't have the osmotic drive. Urea, on the other hand, is similar to water, which means it moves back and forth between ICF and ECF, extracellular and intracellular, based on its osmotic gradient. So it has no effect whatsoever on the tonicity. That's why we said in normal physiologic condition, you can safely assume that tonicity correlates to sodium concentration. Now in diabetic, some patients like say DKA or non-ketotic hyperosmotic hyperglycemia, severe hyperglycemia, the glucose will affect the tonicity. And the way to tell if we having higher tonicity uh, or not will come to it when we dive more into uh, the hyper and uh, sorry hyponatremia and how do we um, start our evaluation and work up of that. But there is something I want you to understand and I will finish here is the osmotic gap which is the difference between measured osmolarity minus calculated osmolarity.